How y'all doing today? Spiral Gamer here, coming at you all with another Magic Look Together and Deck Profile. And this is going to be a different profile from the last time we did a profile, uh, from that day at the time. Now before I go into this video here, sudden go to profile, I just want to thank you all so much for positive feedback I got on that last video. That last video I got quite a bit of good positive feedback. And I got already a pretty decent amount of likes right off the bat. It really means a lot to me. Uh, for those of you who want to check out that deck profile, I'll leave a link in the description now below for those of you all who want to check out that deck profile right here. Anyways, this is another, another Magic magic uh, deck, uh, Dragon deck profile, but this time it's still the all red version. This build right here is going to be the more red and green version. Now, the ideal goal of this deck right here is to be able to build up as much mana as you possibly can so you can be able to bring your dragons on easier like faster compared to previous build. And what I really like about this build, compared to the previous build, is that since you're playing red and green, this gives you access to both to red and green dragons as well, other than just playing pure red. This gives you, as you see right here, access to Artarka, both the new one and the previous version. This gives you access to Savage Fit Fitmaw. And if I wanted to, I could also fit in uh, Broodmother Dragon, if I ever find a Broodmother Dragon, and of course your other... Uh, you can also fit in up your green dragons or even pure red dragons, whatever you come across to as well. So there's a lot of nifty things you can do with this deck in general. Now the build is not yet perfect. There's still some flaws that the build is going through right now here and there, and I am working them out for, out very well, best I possibly can. I don't have Birds of Paradise, and once I pick up Birds of Paradise, I'll definitely fit in Birds of Paradise best I possibly can. But this is how my build is currently right now at the moment. So if you want, if you all want to give me a critique that you did previously, if you all want to give me a critique, give me give me your honest opinions. How you feel about the deck here now? I it is I'm very appreciative. I'll definitely make some, and I might make some changes depending on what you all suggest to me. So, with that being said, let's get on straight to the deck profile, and I'll explain my choices here and there, just so you all can better understanding what I'm trying to do here. Um, as usual, for those of you all who are just here to net deck, I did leave the deck list in the description down below for those of you all who are just here to net deck. I only ask that you drop a like on your way out. It means a lot to me. It's very appreciative. And with that being said, let's move on straight into the deck profile right now, shall we? Alright, so start with the dragons. Let's get the bigger dragons out of the way real quick. Start off with two copies of a Tarka, a Dragon Lord Tarka. This is like the your big boss of the deck right here. This dude is like the board white of this deck right here. Uh, he, he's an 8-8 with Flying and Trample, which is amazing. And he also has the ability of, when he's first brought out, uh, you can deal 5 damage divided to target creatures and or planeswalker your opponent controls. So if your opponent if my opponent has let's say two two twos and a one one I can wipe I can snipe them out or if they had like a three three and a two two I can snipe them out right out the bat bat when he's first brought out. And also another another thing that's really great about this guy is that he can also take out annoying planeswalkers as well. If not take him out at least get rid of the good portion of their loyalties just so they don't go off with their really big loyalty abilities as well, or even the process, maybe even potentially take out a planeswalker, which is just really huge, and powerful for a deck like this. So uh, yeah, this is just a really nice card in general. Now, obviously, he is a legendary creature, so that's which is why I'm only playing two of him. <clears throat> no, excuse me. If he wasn't a legendary, I would definitely be playing three or four of him. But unfortunately, he is a legendary, and I am other, and I am, am also playing other dragons besides just him. So unfortunately, we can only play Dragon Lord two or Dragon Lord targets right now at the moment. And speaking of Tarka, same goes with the next version of Tarka. Next up, we're playing two copies of a Tarka World Render. Uh, this guy is just really nice right here in general. Uh, he's a 6 4 that also has Flying Trample, just like the, the other Tarka we see right here. Uh, he's a really great card, but unfortunately, just like the, the other Tarka I showed you all, uh, he's, a, he's a legendary, so, the only, so it's better off just playing only two of him instead of three or four, which is very unfortunate. But once you get him on the board along with the other dragons, he gives all your dragons uh, double strike and himself double strike as well, which is a very huge part as well. Now, while you can't have more than one World Render or Targa or Dragon Lord or Targa at the same time, you can at least have a Dragon Lord or Targa and a World Render or Targa both together, which is a very huge part of the abilities because, again, they both have Flying Trample, and while they're both swinging, they'll also gain double strike. So this becomes a 8-8 with double strike with flying trample and it's because of six four with flying trample and, and double strike along with your other dragons as well while your other dragons aren't always the strongest they do have some nifty abilities and having them have double strike as well definitely allows you to get over some nice nifty plays here and there and then next up for the dragons for the red and green dragons next up we're playing four copies of savage fitma this card is a very helpful useful card for this deck right here 
Uh, he's a 4-4 four, four with only requires four colors, one red, one green. So he's very easy, a lot easier to bring out compared to the, the Atarkas. But what's really good about him is that while he's swinging, you get three red and three green, green to your mana pool right out the bat, which is very useful because once you start swinging with him, regardless if he does his... It doesn't matter if he does damage or takes out a creature or planeswalker. Walker, if he doesn't take out anything, or even if he ends up dying, it's at the end of the world. As long as you're able to get a good portion of mana to your mana pool, thanks to this guy's ability, he's pretty much done his job. And then right after you're done swinging with him, you can just do some really nice nifty combos where you bust out your Atarkas out of nowhere, you bust out your other big dragons out of nowhere, you bust out your planeswalker out of nowhere, and other some maybe some other supporter creatures here and there. This guy becomes a handful very quickly if your opponent does not deal with him, because if your opponent does not deal with him, and after he gives you the mana you, you need, you can start dropping your dragons as if there's no tomorrow, which is just ridiculous. And that's it for the red and green dragons. Now for the pure green, red dragons, excuse me, for the pure red dragons, uh, just like the previous build right here, just like the, the pure red build, we're still playing the three thunder breaks. Oh, I'm sorry, the four thunder breaks. As I mentioned before, he's the go-to guy of the deck right here. Uh, four, a four drop with four four flying, and if any of your dragons get targeted by by any ability or whatever, such you deal three damage to your punch face for free, which is nice. And you have some, and since this is a dragon deck, and you're spamming up quite a bit of dragons. That makes if any of your dragons get targeted for whatever reason that you deal, you deal three damage to the, your opponent regardless. And if you get at least two of them on the board, while you have at least another good dragon on the board going on, your opponent is just going to have a very bad day because if they even try to snipe by one of your dragons, while you have at least two of them on the board, two of these guys on board, that's free six damage to your opponent's face. At the next turn, you could just make them pay for it and just wipe out the rest of your life out of nowhere. And speaking of life wiping out for the last of the dragons, just like, again, also just like the previous build, we're playing three copies of Scourge of Falkris. Uh, Scourge of Falkris, excuse me. Uh, a flyer that gives you the ability where every time a dragon is dropped or he is dropped, you burn one damage to your opponent or target creature for every dragon you control in general. And this is a heavy dragon spam deck. So obviously you're gonna be bang so just so as I mentioned in the previous deck profile, you're gonna be burning some life, taking away a good portion of your opponent's life, uh, life by your opponent, or if not, you're gonna be sniping out some creatures very nicely, very quickly, and he just gets in there very hard. And that's it for the dragon creatures. Now for the non-dragon creatures, the only non-dragons we're playing, uh, again as I said before, I don't have. Uh, Birds of Paradise. I am working on getting Birds of Paradise. It is kind of expensive right now. But this is what I'm currently playing right now. We're playing four copies. Uh, Sylvan is, is Catatide. Excuse me if I got the name wrong. And three copies of Sage. Uh, these are just really nice creatures that can be tapped for any mana. Uh, this can be tapped for any one, one mana of, of any player choice. This can be tapped for three mana of any choice. With the only downside is that the any mana spent by her... It has to be creatures, which, of course, your idea goal of this deck right there is, of course, bringing out dragons. So the whole so-called downfall isn't really a downfall at all, because, again, you're focused on bringing out your dragon creatures. So she helps out very nicely as well. Now, what does suck about her is that, of course, you won't be able to bring out your planeswalker with her. But, again, this deck is more focused on busting out your dragons. So she definitely still comes in handy very quickly. So, again, this build might be a little bit better if I were to get my hands on Birds of Paradise. But this is the mana drop creatures I currently have right now at the moment, so please bear with me just a little bit longer. And as I say for the creatures, for the for the Planeswalker, I played two copies of Sarkin Fall. Uh, Sarkin Fall is just a really nice card in general. Uh, his plus one gives gives all my creatures plus one and plus one for a turn, and haste for a turn. So even though I am playing Dragon Tempest this deck right here, it is always nice to uh, give my creatures haste just in case I don't have Dragon Tempest, and or it's also nice to give my creatures put all my creatures plus one and plus one to end a turn. Makes them a slightly tougher and slightly harder to deal with when I want to swing with them. But what I really like about this ability is that he has the option where I can nag two out of him to either take a creature from my opponent or my favorite ability, I can nag six out of him in exchange to get uh, five 4-4 four, four red dragon creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield out of nowhere. So out of nowhere, if I just neg six, I get five 4-4s four, out of nowhere. And again, this is a dragon deck, so more free dragons. Definitely helps this deck out a little bit, especially you happen to use a guy's ability when you have either Dragon Tempest or Scourge of Falkyrie on the board. Because like I said before, you are going to be dealing with some massive damage. So let's say you have only Scourge and Sarkin, and that's it, right? That means when you bring it, that means, and 
that that means when you next six out Sarkin, you get five dragons out of him. So that's six dragons total. That means each dragon you just brought out is going to be doing six damage to target creature or player, which that right there is either a game ending game situation right there, or that is also a massive board wipe out your opponent's creatures as well. So this guy could definitely do his job pretty well there. Well, when he's used properly. And that is it for the creatures. Now for the enchantments. The, the only enchantment we're playing is four copies of Dragon Tempest. Uh, as I explained in the previous video right here, Dragon Tempest is just so nice. Uh, it gives all my dragons haste. And whenever and just like Scourge, every time I drop a dragon, I can burn one damage to target creature or player for every dragon I control. So yeah, more board wipe, more game ending. Just a really nice fun card in general. That's the only enchantment I'm playing uh, for the sorceries, because I am actually playing quite a bit of sorceries. We're playing four copies of Explore. Explore is just nice, nice because it not only allows me to get additional land, allow me to play additional land, excuse me, but it also allows me to get a draw as well, which is definitely very useful in these situations. I mean, if you don't ever get the additional land draw, it's not the end of the world. As long as you're able to draw into what you really need to draw into, you should be okay, I guess. But I, as most people would, like most people, I would prefer if I could be able to drop Competition land, if possible, and then and then four copies of Sylvan Scrying. Uh, search for any land card from my deck in my hand because I am playing a special a land that's not a basic land, and this can allow me to search for that land as well. But searching for but worse, if it's not worst case scenario, I can always search for a mountain or a forest if I really need a mountain or forest for for whatever reason. And for instance, the only instant I'm playing is four copies of the Lightning Bolt. Just a nice good card to snipe out uh, more annoying creatures in case things don't go my way. Or if things things happen to be convenient for me, I can also use this to burn three damage to my opponent for, for game GG. And that's it for the entire mini deck besides the lands. For the lands, uh, we're playing a good portion of lands right here. Uh, for the special land, all I'm really playing is four copies of... Rootbound Greg. Uh, this can be, this comes with ba battlefield tapped when it's first uh, brought up to the battlefield, unless I control a more mountain or a forest. So if I control a forest or a mountain, this doesn't have to be attacked right back, which is really nice because again, this is red green, so this definitely helps out a little bit. And for the rest of the land, we're playing one, two, three, four, five, six. Pardon me, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 forest and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mountains. I am thinking about uh, changing up the, the land ratios because I want to see how what, because I, I feel like if I change the land ratios here and there and, I, and if I use bear, uh, certain lands in particular instead, it might make some of my plays like easier. I'm not really too sure. I'll see what I can do in the near future. Hopefully, I, I find out what, what my deck needs and I find out what lands on my deck needs more specifically in order to make this deck work. And, uh, yeah, everybody, that right there was my red-green dragon spam, well, red-green dragon, we'll just call it red-green dragons. That right there was my red-green dragon magic deck profile. Uh, it is a work of progress, like I said at the beginning. It's not yet perfect. I do have some ideas what I do want to do with the deck in the near future. Uh, like I said, like, crap a lot of times, I want to put in Birds of Paradise. Uh, I want to put in, like, other dragons besides what you see right here. And I want to try out some other, and there's, like, another dragon here and there. That some of my friends have been try has been suggesting me try out, and I might ponder on that. And I also want to find the right lands. I think they're going to be more suitable for this deck right here. I just don't know what lands I want to put into the deck yet. I just got to do my research a little bit more and see what lands would go more smoother with the deck right here. And yeah, other than that, it does usually do pretty well in my locals. Uh, I haven't competed in tournaments yet, but I do. I have competed with with fun against quite a bit with my friends, and it does have a pretty good win ratio. Uh, currently, I just got this deck at the beginning of May 1st. Uh, I took an, I played this deck total of uh, 15 times, and it's won 12 matches and three and lost three matches. So it's doing pretty good for a deck that was just put together recent May. So yeah, pretty good bragging rights right there. So with that being said, let me know what you all think about this deck profile in the comment section down below, and I will see you all around. Uh, and I'm out. Bye. Peace.